All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I'm Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to bring you our daily Bitcoin and Bitcoin miner update, but I also want to call a timeout, and I want to go through a bunch of charts that we haven't looked at. They're more big picture charts. I want to put in perspective just how devastated the Bitcoin mining industry has been from a stock standpoint. So I'm going to look at some numbers. I think it's important everybody takes a step back and reflect and see the big picture. So we'll talk about that some more. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Also, if everybody could please smash the like button. It helps the channel out a lot, and I really appreciate it. Lastly, you can become a member of the channel by hitting the join button on YouTube. If you don't see a join button, there should be a link below. Members get some members-only content. In addition to that, we do a once-a-week live stream, which actually is today. And lastly, the members get to pick once a week a video for me to do a deep dive on. So we'd love to have you there. Let's talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin miners is really what I want to focus on and show you guys some data that I think helps put things in perspective because we're so deep into this and every day seems like such chaos that I want to try and bring some order if I can. Okay, first of all, we'll just take a look at the Bitcoin big board. We're in the middle of the trading day, so I don't know where this is going to end, but there has been a trend all day. Bitfarms and CleanSpark have been the leaders all day long. There's some others in the green, so you're going to see a bunch in the green and a bunch in the red. It's a real mixed bag today. So BitFarms is up 7% at this point. Hive is up 4%. CleanSpark's just under 6%. There's some big moves to the downside. Core Scientific's down 15% today. Mawson's down 11%. TerraWolf's down 9%. So you can see we've got things going in both directions. So this is definitely a grab bag today. And again, the day is not over. So you guys will know better than I do by the time you watch this where everything's settled out at the end of the day. Okay, so what? I want to start out with this chart. This is a chart we've been looking at and paying close attention to. This is the progress of all these Bitcoin miners over the last five months. And basically this measures back to the lows that they hit in June. Each one of these miners hit basically a two year low back in June when Bitcoin flash crashed down to 17,500. We only have one company left in the green. Marathon is up 19% over the last five months. There were three standout companies, Marathon, Riot, and Hut. Those three companies were still very nicely in the green even last week. But the last week has been a catastrophe. So we now have other than Marathon, which is now only up 19%. So you can see it just gets worse from there. CleanSpark's now down 46%. BitFarm's now down 47%. And this is from their low. So remember, the June lows were 52-week lows, mostly two-year lows, and in some instances, all-time lows for these Bitcoin miners. So when I say that CleanSpark is down 46%, that means they're down 46% from their two-year low. Bitfarm, same thing, 47% from their two-year low. So these numbers you can see are drastic, but I want to show them in another way because truly the entire Bitcoin mining industry, these stocks have been priced for not only all these companies to fail, but I think at this point, essentially, they've priced in Bitcoin failing. And I'm going to show you why I think that. Okay, this one's not a fancy chart. It's just a list. This is all the stocks that we've been following. These are all the stocks on that chart that you just saw. So this is their behavior from their all-time high. Now, that's about a 20 month window. So you see the best stock on the entire list is Marathon. It's down 93% from its highs last November. Hive, which a lot of people actually probably would guess is at the bottom of this list, is actually tied at 93%. Now, there's not too much of a difference between the top and the bottom of this list. When we get down to the bottom, you're going to see Gree down 99%. Core Scientific down 99%. Core Scientific's down another 15% today, already being 99% down from its recent highs. To get from down 95% to down 97.5%, your stock needs to get cut in half again. So there is actually a huge difference between down 93% and down 99%. Having said that, down 93% is a catastrophic result. You can only argue that the market is pricing in that those companies are highly likely to go out of business once they're down 93%. And again, some of these highs were probably too high, but clearly at this point, down this much, these stocks are starting to be massively oversold. This is the way I'm trying to look at this right now. Here is the entire list. You can see every single stock. They haven't been treated the same, but they have all been destroyed. So if you have a Bitcoin mining company that you're familiar with and you think that they are going to survive whatever this is, be it a bear market, a crypto winter, be this short-term effects from the FTX situation, all that kind of stuff, whatever you think is coming, 
What's your one year, two year, five year outlook on Bitcoin? Because if you believe that Bitcoin is going to survive and go up over time and you have a miner that you think can survive whatever this crypto winter is, they're monumentally oversold at this point. In other words, if CleanSpark survives, then being down 95% is going to, in retrospect, look like a massive, massive discount. That's if they survive. If they don't, then they're going to go down 100%, but they're already down 95%. So I can't tell you which one of these stocks to buy and, and you know, you got to decide if you even want to buy any of these stocks. Please do your own due diligence. What I'm saying is I think people ought to at least put on their watch list if they think there's a strong Bitcoin mining stock. I don't know if you want to sit here and wait for Bitcoin to bottom out. I know a lot of people, the consensus is, well, Bitcoin's going to get down to 13,000 or 10,000. I'll have my buying opportunity then because there is a chance that you can miss the bottom on some of these. And again, you got to be very careful because I do believe actually several of these stocks, several of these companies probably are good going out of business. My personal opinion is the majority are going to survive, but several probably will go out of business. And the worse this gets, the more of these that will go out of business. So the question is, do you believe that every single Bitcoin miner will be out of business a year or two from now? Or are some of these going to survive? And if so, then they're the winners. And those are the ones we're looking for. Okay, so this is a chart of each one of those companies by their market cap as of the close of the market yesterday. So obviously that doesn't take into account what happened today. What I want to really show you is so many of these now are trading essentially as penny stocks. A market cap of $17 million. This is a company that was $160 million market cap a year ago, and now it's a $17 million market cap. Stronghold, same thing. Almost all of these companies were at least a $100 or $200 million company. Many of these companies, Bitfarms was well over a billion dollar market cap this time last year, and it's $120 million right now. So you can see the market cap and total investment in this area has shrunk monumentally. Mentally. So this is just kind of another way to illustrate just how far down this has gone. The whole list altogether, everything you see here put together is only $2.7 billion of total market cap. That's all the Bitcoin miners put together. I don't even think that would put them in the top 1,000 companies in America if you used all of them, put them together, and made them one. The other thing I think is worth noting is here's the distribution by market cap. So you're starting to see there's two gigantic pieces of this pie. Marathon and Riot make up 50 percent of all of the market cap of Bitcoin miners right now. So, okay. So with all that said, I would just want to take a quick look at the Bitcoin charts. And again, the d trading date is not over. And obviously Bitcoin never stops trading, but Bitcoin was trading at around 15,766 when the market closed yesterday. So we are up from there. So we're up about two and a half percent. That doesn't even make up for what we lost over the weekend. We're still way behind where we were on Friday. So, and you can see Although Bitcoin's up two and a half percent, there's external events, mainly FTX and Genesis and things like that, that are weighing down on the entire cryptocurrency world, Bitcoin included. Just a quick look at the four hour time frame, and you'll see we did have a very nice four hour green candle here. So I wanted to show you that. And then I want to show you the one day time frame. On Wednesday, November 9th, we hit a low of around 15,500. We retested that low yesterday, and now we have a very nice green candle, and we're, we're about six or seven hundred dollars above that. So, you know, that's not a gigantic buffer zone, but it does look like potentially we may have found support here, a potential double bottom. Obviously, if another gigantic news story comes out, then I think we can expect to see this move a leg lower. So I'm not looking at the technicals very much right now because it's all about the news cycle and it's all about market sentiment. So if more big bad bombshells come out, whether they be FUD or true, I do think that Bitcoin is susceptible to another leg down. But what I'm hoping here is we have retested this line of support and we can start our journey back up. So I'm going to leave it at that for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.